Picture a small red star glowing faintly in the darkness, barely half as hot as our own sun. This is TRAPPIST-1, sitting about 40 light years away from Earth, and circling around it are seven known planets, each one bathed in the star's dim but constant light. One of those planets stands out from all the rest. It's called TRAPPIST-1e, and it just might change everything we thought we knew about life beyond Earth. TRAPPIST-1e is a rocky world, slightly smaller than our own planet. Its radius is about 92% of Earth's, and it weighs in at roughly 69% of Earth's mass. In cosmic terms, that makes it remarkably similar to home. But here's where things get interesting. TRAPPIST-1e orbits incredibly close to its star, so close that a full year there lasts just 6.1 days. Despite that tight orbit, the planet sits right in what scientists call the habitable zone. That's the sweet spot where temperatures could potentially allow liquid water to exist on the surface. Think about that for a moment. A world not much smaller than Earth, orbiting in a region where water, the foundation of all life as we know it, might actually survive. This sets the stage for one of the most compelling questions in all of science. Could life exist there? For researchers around the world, TRAPPIST-1e represents a cosmic laboratory unlike any other. For the rest of us, it's a tantalizing window into what might be possible out there in the vast darkness of space. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. When scientists talk about finding another Earth, TRAPPIST-1e is exactly the kind of planet they have in mind. It's a terrestrial world, solid and rocky, just like the ground beneath our feet. And among all the thousands of planets we've discovered beyond our solar system, TRAPPIST-1e ranks as one of the closest matches to Earth we've ever found. Its size and mass are so similar to our own planet that scientists can't help but wonder. If conditions are right, could this world support liquid water on its surface? Now, the fact that TRAPPIST-1e completes an entire orbit around its star in just 6.1 Earth days might sound extreme. And it is. The planet hugs its star incredibly closely. But here's the key. TRAPPIST-1 is much cooler and dimmer than our sun. So even at that close distance, TRAPPIST-1e remains within the habitable zone, that crucial region where temperatures aren't too hot and aren't too cold. Imagine just for a moment that you could somehow stand on the surface of TRAPPIST-1e. The view would be absolutely alien. That red dwarf star would dominate the entire sky, casting everything in a deep reddish glow like a permanent sunset that never ends. And if you looked carefully, you might even spot some of the planet's six siblings hanging in the sky as tiny points of light, closer than any planets appear from Earth. Of course, being Earth-sized and sitting in the habitable zone doesn't automatically mean life exists there, but it does make TRAPPIST-1e a prime candidate for study. Its density suggests a rocky composition similar to Earth's. Its orbit places it in that Goldilocks zone. Together, these factors make it a natural laboratory for understanding what it actually takes for a rocky planet to support life beyond our solar system. TRAPPIST-1's environment is shaped entirely by its parent star, and red dwarfs like TRAPPIST-1 are complicated neighbors to have. On one hand, red dwarfs burn cooler than our sun and emit far less light. That's actually why TRAPPIST-1e can orbit so closely and still remain potentially habitable. But on the other hand, these small stars have a violent streak. They frequently unleash powerful flares and bursts of high-energy radiation that can be absolutely devastating to any nearby planets. These stellar outbursts can strip atmospheres away completely or bombard the surface with radiation that makes life virtually impossible. This is where advanced telescopes come in. Scientists are using some of the most sophisticated instruments ever built to study TRAPPIST-1e's atmosphere, or to figure out if the planet even has an atmosphere at all. Early observations suggest that if TRAPPIST-1e does have atmospheric gases, they'd need to be substantial enough to shield the surface from all that radiation, while still maintaining temperatures that could support liquid water. There's another complication to consider. The planet's extreme proximity to its star almost certainly means it's tidally locked. Picture our moon, 
which always shows the same face to Earth. TRAPPIST-1e likely does the same thing with its star. One hemisphere in permanent daylight, the other in endless night. This could create extreme temperature differences between the two sides, with one face baking under constant starlight, while the other freezes in perpetual darkness. However, if TRAPPIST-1e has a thick enough atmosphere, winds and atmospheric circulation might distribute heat around the planet, creating a more balanced climate. That's the hope anyway. Understanding all these conditions is absolutely crucial. Habitability isn't just about being the right distance from a star. It's about surviving that star's behavior, withstanding its radiation, and developing a climate that can support life despite all the challenges. Trappist. One's harsh but potentially balanced environment makes it an ideal natural laboratory for studying the absolute limits of where life might exist beyond Earth. Here's the hard truth. Being in the habitable zone means nothing if TRAPPIST-1e doesn't have the right atmosphere. Scientists are working to answer one of the most fundamental questions about this planet. Does it have a stable layer of protective gases surrounding it? Or is it just a bare, rocky world completely exposed to its star's radiation? If TRAPPIST-1e does have an atmosphere, and that's still a big if, it might contain nitrogen, carbon dioxide, or water vapor. These gases would act like a blanket, helping to regulate surface temperatures and potentially allowing liquid water to pool on the surface. Without that protective layer, the intense radiation from TRAPPIST-1's frequent stellar flares would strip away any water that tried to exist there, leaving nothing but a dry, hostile wasteland. This is where the James Webb Space Telescope comes into the story. This incredible instrument is already studying TRAPPIST-1e, probing for signs of an atmosphere, Every observation brings us closer to understanding whether this planet has the kind of protective, life-supporting environment that could sustain oceans, clouds, or even the basic chemistry necessary for life to begin. Think of the atmosphere as both the planet's shield and its thermostat. It's the difference between TRAPPIST-1e being just another lifeless rock floating through space and being a world where life, even simple microbial life, might actually have a chance to exist. When it comes to TRAPPIST-1e, everything ultimately comes down to one question. Is there water? Liquid water is the absolute foundation of life as we understand it. And the fact that TRAPPIST-1e sits squarely in the habitable zone means this rocky world might have exactly the right conditions for water to exist in liquid form on its surface. But it's not quite that simple. Surface temperatures, atmospheric pressure, and stellar radiation all have to work together. If the planet's atmosphere is thick enough to trap heat and protect the surface from those devastating stellar flares, then pools of water or even entire oceans could potentially exist. And even relatively shallow seas could provide the kind of environment where the chemistry of life might begin. Scientists consider trappist one one of the top candidates for future in-depth studies, and for good reason. Its size closely matches Earth's, its composition appears rocky, and its orbit places it right where conditions might be just right. Among all the potentially habitable exoplanets we've discovered, TRAPPIST-1e is one of the most accessible for detailed observation. Studying this planet teaches us far more than just whether water exists there. It helps us understand how planets in extremely tight orbits around red dwarf stars can develop, or lose, the conditions necessary for life to emerge and survive. Now, let's be clear. Nobody has detected life on TRAPPIST-1e. Not even close. But the combination of its habitability potential and its relative proximity to Earth makes it an absolutely prime target for both current telescopes and future space missions. This is a world that might hold genuine secrets about how life could emerge in places we never expected throughout our entire galaxy. The observations of TRAPPIST-1e that we've gathered so far paint a picture that's both exciting and frustratingly incomplete. The James Webb Space Telescope has provided some of the most detailed data we've ever collected on this distant rocky world, revealing subtle but important clues about its atmosphere and surface conditions. But interpreting that data? That's where things get challenging. 
Scientists are still working to determine whether TRAPPIST-1e has a substantial atmosphere protecting its surface or if it's mostly exposed rock. Some measurements suggest there might be a thin layer of gases present, possibly just enough to shield the surface from those harsh stellar flares and help maintain temperatures where liquid water could survive. Other studies hint that large portions of the planet could be essentially barren, with dramatic temperature swings between the permanently lit day side and the eternally dark night side. These findings really highlight just how difficult it is to study exoplanets, especially those orbiting active red dwarf stars. The star's own activity, all those flares and radiation bursts, can interfere with measurements, making it incredibly hard to separate the planet's actual atmospheric signature from the effects of the star itself. Despite all these challenges, every single observation teaches us something valuable about what makes a planet habitable. And that's exactly why TRAPPIST-1e remains one of the most promising targets in our search to understand whether life exists beyond Earth. TRAPPIST-1e captures our collective imagination for a simple reason. It's one of the closest Earth-sized worlds we've found that might actually be capable of supporting life. Studying this planet helps us tackle some of the most fundamental questions humans have ever asked. How common is life in the universe? Are we truly alone, or are there other worlds where life has taken hold? What exact conditions does a planet need to cross that threshold from lifeless rock to habitable world? How do rocky planets survive the intense, harsh radiation from red dwarf stars? But TRAPPIST-1e also matters because it pushes our technology and scientific understanding forward. Each observation tests the absolute limits of instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope. Astronomers are developing entirely new techniques for detecting faint atmospheric signatures and understanding surface conditions on distant worlds. The methods and data we're gathering from studying TRAPPIST-1e will shape how we explore exoplanets for decades to come. For humanity as a whole, though, this planet represents something even bigger than research and discovery. TRAPPIST-1ee reminds us that Earth is part of a much larger cosmic story. By exploring distant worlds light years away, we gain fresh perspective on our own fragile planet and the delicate balance of conditions that allows life to flourish here. It sparks our curiosity, it drives innovation, and it challenges us to seriously consider the possibility that life exists beyond our solar system, perhaps in forms we can barely imagine. The story of TRAPPIST-1e is really just beginning to unfold. Future observations with the James Webb Space Telescope, along with other powerful instruments currently being developed, will continue refining our understanding of this world's atmosphere, climate, and potential for harboring liquid water. Scientists have already planned multiple transit studies, observations when the planet passes in front of its star, to detect specific gases, search for clouds, and look for any signs of chemical processes that might hint at habitability or even life itself. TRAPPIST 1E is far more than just a distant rock floating through space. It's an active laboratory for studying life beyond Earth. Each new measurement we collect teaches us something crucial about how planets behave around red dwarf stars, how stellar radiation affects planetary atmospheres, and how those atmospheres evolve under such extreme conditions. For both scientists and everyone following this research, the real excitement lies in what's coming. Over the next several years, we may finally answer the question that drives all of this work. Is TRAPPIST-1e truly capable of supporting life? Or will it turn out to be a fascinating but ultimately barren world, full of untapped potential but lacking that final spark? Either way, TRAPPIST-1e will continue shaping our understanding of the universe and our place within it. Because every answer we find leads to new questions, and every new question pushes us to look a little further, to wonder a little harder, and to keep searching for signs that we're not alone among the stars.